Marhaba and hello to our friends, brothers and sisters all around the world. Once again, I think this is our eighth program. I'm American historian Jack Dempsey, living in Crete, and my friend is Muhammad Jihad Ishmael. We are here on July 21st, 2022, to keep the discussion going, as we all say it, always say at the beginnings of our programs, because it's so important, especially in the wake of recent political developments around the world, to keep the Palestinian situation in the focus of the world's eye. So we mainly begin our talks with a quick discussion of the conditions this week, as we've been saying, in Gaza, which is especially critical in terms of electricity and water, as Mohammed will explain to you in a moment. And we always say one other quick thing up front, which is please, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, contact your government representatives about the Palestinian situation, which is probably the greatest injustice on the face of this earth right now. And that's saying a lot. Contact your government representatives and demand that they change the policy in order to help Palestinians achieve justice and freedom and a healthy new life. They are eager to have peace with Israelis, anybody who is willing, and that is what they deserve. So Mohammed, thank you again for being with me and being with us. And we're always very interested to hear how you and your wonderful family are doing. What is it like for you in Gaza this week, here at the beginning of high summer, as the hot weather comes in? What is it like for you there now? Thank you, brother, for this uh, new opportunity. I am happy to be again with you, just to tell uh, our followers, the people who are watching us, about the updated uh, news and what happened here in Gaza. Uh, as usual, each summer we have uh, a continuous crisis here in Gaza. We have big crisis in the uh, electricity, uh, exactly like what happened now these days. Uh, electricity is very, very bad. Uh, we haven't even the, the, the eight uh, hours per day. Uh, I stayed uh, yesterday uh, almost without electricity at all. Maybe I had it two or three hours and fragmented, uh, uh, not, not uh, with each other, just fragmented hours. Yes. Uh, uh, also, we have a uh, big problem uh, with, the, uh, with the heat. You cannot uh, make like, uh, like to, to, uh, to operate your, 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 your uh, uh, air condition, uh, fans, etc. Uh, we haven't water, we haven't clean water. Maybe you know, and people are knowing well, that uh, uh, most of Gaza water is unveiled for the human uh, consumption. Uh, so uh, as each uh, summer, unfortunately, we have the same crisis are uh, taking place. Also, uh, Maybe, maybe this summer we have a new uh, crisis we, uh, we hadn't had previously, uh, which is the high prices. Maybe in the last meeting, I told you and told uh, people how much the prices became crazy here in Gaza. Uh, everything uh, is jumping uh, in the sky, all, 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 the, uh, all the prices sugar, flour, uh, 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 vegetables, cooking oil, everything, everything, everything became expensive. And uh, you know, here in Gaza, there is no uh, permanent source of income to maybe 80% uh, of the families. 80% uh, of Gaza families are lying under the poverty rate, or poverty line. So can you imagine how those families can survive without, uh, without control on prices? Unfortunately, uh, the two governments, Gaza government and West Bank government, 
doesn't make any control on uh, on 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 uh, prices they doesn't make any pressure over the traders the merchants just to control this issue the, the prices so i think they are uh, they are uh, sharing the same the same sin with uh, with merchants they are uh, sharing the same corruption because they doesn't uh, make any control over uh, prices in our market and let people of the world imagine many of them have a similar experience but not as serious not as constant not for as many years and years and years on end of having to try to survive with almost no electricity with no dependable power and without very much at all drinking water you cannot water your gardens to grow your food how do you cool off by using some water in the summer to keep yourself clean and healthy how difficult i mean living here in crete sometimes we don't have water or electricity it's a little bit uh uh well not ideal let's put it that way and we are i'm sorry to say we are like children when when this does not work well so i wish the rest of the world would somehow try to imagine what the palestinian people have been putting up with for years and years and years also inflation this is something that is affecting all the world the united states is acting as if it's the only country on earth that is seeing higher prices and you know i i don't think that the price of gasoline should be a major issue right now because of the way that we are destroying the earth with the use of gasoline and oil based products but that's that's where we are but in gaza and in the palestinian territories you have three different so called government authorities that affect and corrupt the prices of almost everything hamas palestinian authority fatah and the israeli government to whom you pay all pay taxes and receive nothing nothing in return so you are prisoners under collective punishment which is illegal under international law and every kind of deprivation that we can imagine is is continuing to go on this is why it's so important for us to urge people to contact their government representatives it seems clearer than ever that this is the only hope there is for the palestinians to achieve a life that is worth living for human beings Yes, yes, brother. Uh, simply, we can say that our life in Gaza, without electricity, without clean water, without uh, control uh, on uh, prices, we can say simply it looks like the Paleolithic uh, life in, in in the caves of the Paleolithic era, when uh, Neanderthals used to live uh, in Central Europe and in uh, in the western part of Asia. <laughs> we 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 looks like Neanderthal in his uh, in his uh, peak. Wow. Well, for this week we are going to talk about three main things: the Biden visit, the wave of COVID infections that has been hitting Gaza and the Palestinian territories, and the horrible news that there have been increases in the numbers of suicides by Palestinian people. So in the shadow of these three subjects maybe we could talk first about President Biden's visits what what if anything did the Palestinians like yourself expect from the visit what observations uh, do you have to share what things did you perceive and understand from his visit and how would you evaluate it would you like to talk a little about that for me as a simple ongoing looking on looking american it was an immense disappointment and even very damaging to international relations in a lot of ways i i couldn't believe some of the things i was seeing so tell me about your and the palestinian people's reception of biden's visit yeah uh, i will tell you about both about the perspective of the palestinian people uh, in particular and after that i will tell you 
about the 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 Arabian uh, perspective in general. If you speak about the 22 uh, Arab uh, states, uh, first of all, uh, to, uh, if you want to speak about the Palestinians, uh, of course, uh, the biggest majority of them used to look uh, in uh, a pessimistic way to to the visit of Biden. Uh, they they didn't expect anything positive from his uh, visit. Uh, all of the Palestinians, or uh, or at least uh, the biggest majority of them, felt pessimistic. I used I used to uh, to, mon to, to monitor some uh, some opinions uh, on the social media uh, just uh, very few hours before the arrival of Biden to the Palestinian territories. Uh, I saw. Uh, a black black image uh, was drawn uh, in the eye of the Palestinian people. Uh, as I told you, the biggest majority are doesn't expect anything good. Most of them are saying uh, Biden is an old, is an old. Uh, uh, he's not a sparrow. He doesn't uh, bring anything useful, anything good to our cause. Uh, this is about the Palestinian uh, people. If you want to speak in general about uh, the, the Arab uh, population, you speak about half, half a billion uh, Arab uh, civilian uh, from Morocco to the Arabian Gulf. Uh, I will tell you something, something uh, strange. Uh, uh, I want uh, to make some sort of comparison between the Arab perspective uh, about Biden and before that uh, their perspective uh, uh, for uh, Trump. Uh, when uh, Trump was uh, the president of USA, uh, Arab people were divided into two camps. One camp used to insult Trump to consider him a madman, to consider him an enemy, uh, like the Palestinians, like uh, like Lebanese people, like Iraqi people, uh, maybe uh, some some uh, other countries in North Africa. Uh, also, of course, of course, the Syrians, because in Trump era they used to invade some some parts of Syria. I, I mean the U.S. troops. Uh, so. Uh, one part was uh, was against Trump, and the other part was supporting inter Trump and was in uh, in love relationship with Trump. And uh, I am talking in particular about the Egyptians and the uh, uh, the states of the Arab Gulf, KSA, Kuwait, Qatar, uh, yes. uh, Arab Emirates, Bahrain, yep. Oman, yeah. Uh, yeah, those six uh, Arab uh, uh, countries who uh, have uh, coasts on the Arab Gulf uh, plus Egypt, these uh, seven countries used to love Trump, used to uh, to uh, to expect something positive from Trump. But now, if you want to speak about uh, the Arab uh, uh, perspective from Biden. I want to tell you that all the Arab people in the 22 countries are looking uh, in a bad way to Biden. No one uh, is looking to Biden in a good way. All of them are insulting Biden, considering him as an enemy, not good man, crazy man, uh, a man who uh, looks like uh, has like uh, psychological problems, a madman. So. Uh, maybe maybe uh, it will be like a joke for the people who are watching us. Uh, when, uh, Biden, when, tr when, when Trump was the president, uh, uh, some of the Arabs used to love him. But let now, me, let me in, ask you a but, question. But now, yeah. uh, go ahead. Yeah. Finish. But yeah. now what? But now what? Yes, yes. I'm yeah. so sorry I interrupted. Please finish. You're yeah. saying, but now... Yeah, now, now, as I told you, all the Arab people are looking in a bad way to Biden, exactly like the, uh, the Palestinians. 
no one, no one at all in the Arab countries uh, is looking good or positively to this man. And, you know, I, I wonder what they are thinking because I, as an American citizen, I'm wondering what Biden is thinking. If anything, it's as if he gets up and says words that he has been told to say. I don't know how many people in the world realize it, but there has been no hope or discussion about a two-state solution for Israel and Palestine for, I think, probably 20 years. And Biden got up over there and said that it's not a good time to support Palestinian rights. The ground is not ready for us to grow the flowers of peace or something, but that he looks forward to a solution on a two-state basis. No one knows what he's talking about. This must be very uh, difficult for Palestinians to see. Yes, 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 of course, I agree with you. Uh, but let, but let, me, let me tell you again that uh, Biden is uh, the first, the first uh, American president in history uh, who, uh, who take this uh, generalization. There is a generalization that he is a bad man. Uh, we hadn't this image in history. Uh, no, uh, no one before Biden got this uh, this uh, this uh, this rate of uh, generalization. Uh, all the Arab people are looking badly to him. So we have to put this in our consideration. And why this man is bad? Why why this man is bad in the eyes of the Arab people? Why, why do they say that? What is the main thing that they are not happy with Mr. Biden about? What is their main problem with Biden? I think, I think some Arab uh, countries uh, are looking uh, uh, badly to him because Biden uh, used in the era of uh, Obama you know he was uh, the the deputy in the era of Obama. Yes. I think he used I think he used to uh, to take a role a big role in the so-called uh, Arab Spring. Uh, you know right now we are suffering from this uh, Arab uh, Spring. Of course, ac according to too much people, it's an American uh, conspiracy, uh, not a wave of democracy. Uh, so uh, I think uh, they uh, they uh, they dislike this man because he had a bad role in the so-called uh, uh, Arab Spring, and he used with Obama to uh, to make a concord uh, with the Muslim Brotherhood against some Arab uh, regimes like Mubarak, uh, Zain al-Din al abidin in Tunisia. Uh, the, the 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 regime in Yemen, etc. I think this is uh, an important reason. In yes, addition, and we remember. In addition, of course, yeah, yeah. In we, addition, of course, to his to his bad role in the Palestinian uh, course. Yes, and the world well remembers Barack Obama in his first term as president. He came to the Middle East and he made a beautiful, powerful speech about the new period of brotherhood and cooperation and that the United States would support democracy. And the fact is that the United States supported the tyrant, the dictator of Egypt, Mubarak, until they could no longer support him, until the uprising against him was so powerful that they had to remove their support from the man. So this is what America does all the time. They support the tyrants, and the occupiers and the dictators until they can no longer get away with it. And then they pretend that they were on the side of freedom all the time. So with Biden spending most of his time with the Israelis when he was in the Israel-Palestine area and with him talking about something no one is even thinking about, a two-state solution, it, it certainly looks like there's not going to be much hope coming from the United States in the near future in terms of forcing change to Israeli policies of apartheid. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, 
uh, I, I, uh, I told you uh, <coughs> Palestinians are looking to Biden that he's worse. He's worse than uh, Trump. They believe that Trump was a clear man, was a clear man, uh, not, not, uh, not like a... Uh, he was a clear man. He was doing uh, all of his uh, actions in the sun, uh, uh, under the sun, not in the shadow. Yes. Uh, uh, I tell you, uh, yeah, yeah. I tell you the perspective of the simple man, of the simple uh, person in, in Gaza. Uh, when I ask some of them, they they tell me uh, we respect Trump because he because he a frank man and he is. Uh, a clear man. He's not a hypocrite. He's not a hypocrite like <laughs> like uh, the like uh, Obama and after that Biden. So I, I I don't know. Maybe they they prefer the Republicans over the Democrats. And do you happen to know? I remember that when Trump, after he decided to move the American embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem in recognition of Jerusalem becoming the capital of Israel, he also said his okay for the Israelis to incorporate the Golan Heights, the part of Southern Syria that Israel had conquered during one of the recent wars. And they named the Golan Heights Trump Heights. Do you know if they have still kept the name of Trump Heights on the Golan? Yeah, uh, the Israeli army used to annex uh, Jolan uh, Heights in the Six Days War yes. in 1967. Um, uh, of course, right now, uh, there, there is an Israeli uh, uh, Israeli uh, existence yeah, yeah, it's really existence over that uh, height. Uh, uh, I think uh, Israel one day, one day, maybe will withdraw from from this height, but they want to make this uh, this withdrawal with a price, you know, uh, yes. with a price. Maybe yes. they want uh, Syria to make some sort of normalization with uh, with Tel Aviv. So, so I think uh, Israel one day will, will uh, withdraw, but they are waiting to make a good deal uh, with a good price for the Israeli uh, external relations, like, like, uh, like to take, uh, like to bring uh, a Syrian uh, uh, normalization, uh, and uh, on the other hand, they give Syria back the Golan Heights. Yeah. Now, you asked me, Mohammed, to keep an eye on our time limits here. So I'd like to move you to another question, if I could, just for the sake of covering some of the important topics that are facing Gaza, the Palestinian territories, and the people there. And that is there has been a serious new wave of COVID infections. I was looking at, for example, Reuters News Agency, and there has been a tremendous upward spike in June and July, up to about 8,000 people a day that are found to suffer from COVID. And that this number is probably much higher because there are very strong limits on the amount of testing they can do. All in all, the Palestinians, they say, have lost more than 592,000 people which does not compare well with the losses in Israeli citizens, and 5,360 people dead from COVID so far. Does the, does the figure of 8,000 new infections per day right now, is that what you hear? Or tell us what this has been like in the Gaza territory for the Palestinians. Yeah. Uh, uh... In fact, here in Gaza, we have, uh, uh, as as you know, we have destroyed uh, health uh, sector. Uh, if you want to compare the number of uh, hospitals to the number of population, uh, you will not find uh, more than one uh, hospital 
serving more than 300,000 people. Not more than, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's a horrible, a horrible, uh, a horrible uh, issue. It's uh, impossible. We have, it's, it's impossible. Yeah, yeah. It cannot yeah, be done. Yeah, yeah, here in Gaza, we have two and a half million uh, population. On the other hand, we have eight, uh, eight uh, hospitals. So if you uh, if you want to make a, cal a calculation, you will find that three hospitals are serving one million population. Uh, and, and according so to you can imagine how uh, how much. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. sorry. I'm just wanted to add that according to Human Rights Watch. During the small, well, short conflict last summer in May of 2021, Israel bombed 10 hospitals in the Gaza territory. So if you have only eight hospitals now, they have destroyed 10 other hospitals that might have made this a bearable situation. But please, I, I'm sorry again to interrupt, but there's so much to to share with our listeners. Tell me, tell us more about what. Uh, the COVID situation has been there. Uh, yes, uh, of course. Uh, when uh, when we talk about uh, what happened here, we have to be frank, not not to tell lies. I think yes, of course, Israel always is violating the international humanitarian law, but uh, it didn't happen in history that Israel used to target a hospital. We have to uh, to confess with the truth and not to tell lies, it, it didn't happen before. Uh, Israel, in fact, uh, doesn't target uh, hospitals. Maybe it, maybe uh, maybe uh, the Israeli troops uh, used to target some schools. Yes, uh, I agree with you. But hospitals, this didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, so, so the human rights... As I told you... The, the Human Rights Watch report that says that 10 hospitals were bombed, this is not correct? It's a mistaken report because first of okay. all we haven't the number ten. We haven't. We didn't reach the number ten. Uh, Maximum we have eight hospitals, and uh, even if we have uh, ten hospitals, can you imagine that Israel used to smash all the hospitals? This 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 uh, th this is something unbelievable. Uh, coming back to COVID. Uh, here in Gaza, we haven't uh, daily uh, big numbers of uh, of cases, but as I told you, uh, here we have a big leak of vaccines, we have a big leak of medicines, of vitamins, uh, supplement uh, supplements, etc. So uh, when we ha when we have some some uh, patients who are suffering from COVID. Uh, the problem is in the curation, in the curation process, how, how, how to heal the, uh, those people. As I told you, uh, hospitals are crowded with people. Uh, if you want to uh, submit for a surgery, they will give you uh, a booking after one or two years to make your surgery. <laughs> Can you imagine? It, is it? No, I cannot imagine. <clears throat> is it? Well, how difficult is it? for Palestinian people to get COVID vaccinated. How many of the uh, Palestinians are, are vaccinated once or twice or more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, one third. One third of Gaza uh, population. One third. And the other two thirds right now are not vaccinated. So the medicines, the vaccines, are not being allowed to come into Baza, to Gaza, right? Of course, of course, of course. And it has been this way for at least over a year. Because again, I was reading a recent report uh, by Al-Mazan that said Israel had blockaded shipments of the vaccine. And it, it seems as though this policy is just another way of Israel hoping to cause deaths among the Palestinian people. They shoot them when they march. They shoot them when they protest. They give them no medicine with which to keep themselves healthy while they are confined. And, and they are almost unable to even test for, the, for COVID. 
Yes, yes, of course. Uh, for the 17th uh, year, we have a continuous siege and a severe siege. Everything is uh, forbidden from uh, entrance into Gaza, food, uh, medicine, uh, everything, everything, everything. And this, this, no doubt, will point us right toward our last topic for today. We have about eight minutes that you have reported to me that there have been increases in the numbers of people, Palestinian people, committing suicide. I know this must be terribly difficult to talk about, but can you help the world understand what is happening? Uh, unfortunately, uh, in the recent three weeks, uh, today I used to make some, some, some statistics just to, uh, just to give those numbers to you and to the people who are watching us. Uh, I, uh, I found in my search that uh, in the recent three weeks, we have more than 12 cases, more than 12 cases. So we have like uh, at least we have four cases per week, uh, four people uh, per week. Some of them uh, used to uh, burn, uh, the majority of them, the majority are using to burn themselves, to, to putting some gasoline and, and, and burn themselves. Uh, other people are using to uh, have some poison uh, by mouth, like tablets, like liquid. Uh, and the other people use to uh, shoot themselves with a gun. Others, maybe they are the, maybe they are the minority, uh, they used to jump uh, to throw themselves from high floors, from high building. Yeah. So uh, we have we have several ways of suicide, but uh, the numbers are, are increasing in a crazy way. Uh, of course, uh, the situation in Gaza is very bad, and uh, most of Gaza need uh, a psychological uh, therapy. Most of Gaza, yes, maybe, yes, maybe from... including me, maybe, maybe, maybe including me and my family. Most of us, maybe all of us, we need some uh, psychological therapy because we are sick, too much sick from the previous wars, from this, uh, this uh, nasty, this, this, uh, this bad uh, yes. siege. From and, from the Israeli apartheid uh, policy against that against against us, so uh, I think this is what pushed people, uh, in fact, to commit the suicide. And as you have said before, uh, there is just simply a constant being hungry because there is not enough food for everybody in the place. The Israelis don't allow enough of it in. And there is almost no good water to drink. The water that you drink makes your stomach sick. It rots your teeth. It causes all kinds of health problems. And on top of the physical aspects of the suffering, there is the hopelessness. Where, is the, where are these people supposed to look to have any feeling of hope? And when you no longer have any hope, it, it's almost automatic that suicides are going to increase. Let me ask you, Mohammed, do you happen to know, are the suicides about equal between, say, men and women? Are they about the same for different ages of people, young, middle, old? How does that look? Unfortunately, uh, you haven't the freedom to search through Google, to make some Googling, uh, to search for numbers, for some uh, statistics, because uh, here in Gaza, uh, the authority uh, doesn't talk about this uh, sensitive issue. They doesn't declare the real numbers. So as a researcher, I used to throw my relations with people yes. in different parts of Gaza. I yes. used to throw my uh, personal relations to count the numbers. But people or search through uh, internet, 
you will find nothing. You will find very, very few results. Of, does it uh, seem of, to uh, you? Of, uh, it, it, does it seem? Does it seem to you that uh, that it is young people, mid, uh, grown people, old people? Is it? Is it men and women equally? How How would you describe yes, yes. the people who are doing this? Yeah, yeah. I will tell you. First of all, uh, the majority are men. The majority are men. Uh, if you want to speak about uh, the women cases, they are few. Not, not too much. So uh, first of all, the majority are men. Uh, if you want to speak about the age, uh, I think most of them, maybe uh, maybe maybe eighty percent of them, are between uh, eighteen uh, eighteen to forty. Eighteen to forty. The majority are in this uh, are in this uh, average of uh, of of age. And this is typically the time of life, 18 to 40, where people are becoming themselves, are coming into their talents and their powers and their abilities, making new families, building careers, having contacts and He's friends all over the world. And, and they are forbidden all these things. They're supposed, they're supposed to be like that. But unfortunately, uh, there is no hope. Uh, they uh, they feel some sort of uh, frustration, total frustration from life. They lose the hope. So uh, in 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 uh, in a moment of of a craziness, they used to burn themselves, to kill themselves. Well, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters around the world, we're coming to the end of our time once again. But I hope that the the dark message of this program today will again inspire you to take up your computer, to take up your pencil and paper and contact your government representatives and demand that they change their policies to help the Palestinians find justice and freedom and healthy life once again. It's absolutely unforgivable that the world has looked on for so long and done nothing. Mohammed, is there something else you would like to say as we say goodbye for today? Uh, thank you, uh, brother. I think that's enough. We gave people uh, some, uh, some updates for what happened here in Gaza. And in the coming uh, programs, maybe we can follow uh, up and uh, continue uh, more and more uh, uh, just just to uh, reflect and give the real image uh, for uh, what happened here in gaza maybe 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 if you if they look to the universal media i am sure they will not find the the real and the true image so what we are doing what we are doing here is to reflect the real image Yes, and one of the first places I would point people to if they're interested in finding out even more of the facts and seeing the realities on the ground in the Palestinian territories, I have seen Al Jazeera do rather a good job in talking with Palestinians, listening to them, talking about their experiences, their feelings of the terrible injustice that has been done and continues to be done and we hope again that they will contact their government representatives to effectuate a change. Mohammed, I know the whole world joins me in wishing you and your family the very best until we speak again within a week or two. And uh, the world is working, believe me, we have not forgotten. Thank you, thank you, brother. Thank you so much.